Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and it's time for the Should You Buy video on the newly released Crucible. The design of this ship went much different than I had expected it to be, but you know what? I like it. I was expecting either a big bulky box that would end up unfolding into what it needed to deploy, or some sort of flying framework, but I guess it was somewhere in the middle while still kind of looking like a ship. The Crucible is on sale now for $350, and the sale goes on through November 30th. So what does this ship do? The simple answer is repair. You know, you're out in space, your ship gets damaged, you have the option to try and either limp back to the nearest starport or maybe plan it to get repaired, or if you're too badly damaged uh, or you don't feel safe as far as trying to get back, the Crucible is the ship that can fix you up. Another purpose of the Crucible is to repair derelicts, so even if the ship isn't yours, if you happen to find a floating ship unattended in space, you have the option of using the Crucible or a couple of them to fix that bad boy up and either keep it or sell it. There have been many discussions about the dreams of finding an abandoned bangle carrier, but there have been a lot of questions about how to actually make that work. Towing a bangle isn't, easy, isn't really an easy feat, so now this kind of gives us our answers on how this actually would end up working out in the game. The Crucible is a dedicated repair ship made by Anvil Aerospace that consists of a few parts, the cab and the workshop. The ship is really designed so that it can service ships of varying sizes with different parts of the ship. Um, we're going to get a design document on the repairing aspect of the game, so we'll do a follow-up video on that occupation later, but let's talk through what we know to this point. First off, the cab was developed in a way that you're actually able to rotate the entire thing. So when you're facing the front of the ship, you get a nice view for flying. But when it comes time for repairing ships, which is mostly accomplished in the rear, you can rotate the entire thing 180 degrees and oversee the work that's being done below and supervise the repair process. So not only is that a cool design note, but it's an important aspect for repairing larger ships. Inside the Scarab, you have two control chairs where you can really utilize articulated repair arms to either uh, use heavy machinery like welders or claws or mixers, um, or if you're servicing something very large like the nose of a constellation, the problem is you're not going to be able to see the top half of the ship. Um, now from the bridge, you get a better viewpoint. You can actually take control of some of these arms, or you can just guide the other arms and the people driving them to where they need to go. The Scarab, which is the box that you can kind of see in these pictures, is also designed to be uh, closed. So if a ship can fit within it, you can then work in artificial gravity. Um, they mentioned that single seat fighters like the Hornet or the Gladiator can fit in there. So you can kind of get an idea of the size of ships that are going to be able to fit and what probably wouldn't uh, end up being able to work in that closed environment. The Scarab has a lot of storage for tools and materials, so you're not constantly having to run in and out of the ship. When you do go in and out of the ship, you're going to find that every entry or exit is an airlock, which is an important piece of design considering there's going to be a lot of hands that are working on anything at any given point. The Scarab ends up just being a module, and that's important to know because like that with the Endeavor, um, we should expect to see other pieces being available down the line. Another similarity to the Endeavor, the Scarab can also be left in space to work as a fully functioning lab or mini station to continue servicing the ships um, that are contained within the Scarab while the cab goes off to do something else, potentially repairing another ship. The inside of the cab um, uh, of the Crucible, we have more storage. There's living quarters, there's lockers which are designed to store EVA suits for quick access so you can get in and do your work quickly. Everything on this ship is articulated, and while you would expect that the arms are on rails, um, that's basically going to help it kind of deploy and get to where it needs to be, even the engines, which are already rotational, are on rails to allow you to accommodate for the adjusting center of mass associated with taking on other ships. Inside the scarab, you also have these, or inside the cab, you have all these different little levels with different elevators to get between them. The primary elevator between the, between the storage and the ground floor um, can carry 36 SEU of cargo, but in reality, that would best be served as 36 SEU of supplies. On the second level of the ship, there's a, a repair station that is planned to allow you to repair components and potentially overclock later down the line, um, but we'll get more information in that design post that I mentioned before. Speaking of design post, uh, when we were going through the white boxing video, Randy actually mentioned that drones were involved for a second, um, but kind of sidestepped that and said it would be another update too. So we can probably assume that if not stock, there's probably going to be the option of having some level of drone support on this ship, which makes sense for the scale of some of these things that you're going to be repairing, and if for nothing else, speed. 
There's also a middle deck with an observation window where they expect to put a, you know, a lot of screens for engineering and controlling every aspect of the ship. They mention that everything in this ship is going to be able to be remote controlled, uh, meaning that if you need to switch from controlling repair arms to controlling the remote turret on top of the ship, you can make that quickly happen to provide some level of defense. And finally, there are doors on the top level to kind of help you EVA out um, and access the top of larger ships a little bit easier. Everything about this ship seems really detailed and interesting, and frankly, it just sounds like a lot of fun. You know, kind of like when we talked about the Orion, I was like, oh god, mining, that doesn't sound like much fun. But it, after seeing the post, I was like, god, I kind of want to be a miner. I get the same thing here. Repairing sounds boring, but after seeing this video and how detailed this is all going to be, I'm like, okay, I kind of want to get on a Crucible and, you know, try and fix some stuff. But the big question here is, should you buy the Crucible? And like with most of these videos, I think the ship is right for some people. And I'll say right now that as a single person, unless you're willing to pay for NPC help, you're not going to be efficient enough to really make the ship worth your while. Could you fly it around? Probably. But you're not going to be doing all that much at the same time. You're not maximizing your time. And you're going to be at a huge risk sitting there all alone trying to repair a ship. And even though you have a remote turret, you're not going to be able to remotely control that while simultaneously trying to evade the incoming targets. I think this ship will be a real money maker for different groups, but it should also be, and most importantly noted as, a real money saver. Organizations are going to be the ones who really benefit from a ship like this. You know, if you're a piracy-focused group, if you're unable to steal a ship or disable them without that ship taking too much damage, Calling in a crucible to repair the ship so you can get, get it operational enough to take back to a port means a big improvement in your in income. If you're an organization that's focused on bounty hunting, having one of these bad boys around is going to serve that exact same purpose. I think there is a group of people that kind of have dreams of utilizing explorers to find derelicts, and if you do find them, a crucible is what you're going to need to repair them. And I think there's also a big contingent of you that just really enjoy team play. This ship is just oozing with teamwork potential. You know, a group of space engineer fans flying together, the cab rotates, people get into arm control chairs, uh, others get into EVA suits and go grab a welder while someone is inside diverting power or mixing the elements needed for the right alloy. The potential here for those of you um, who enjoy role play is probably unparalleled as well, at least until you get up to the capital ships. Teamwork is really going to make or break a ship like this, especially when you need to consider that having support ships around will be important too. And finally, I think anybody that's traveling in long con convoys uh, in a group is going to find a good potential here. And I think PXP will be one that's going to be rocking one or two of these in our long distance hauls. I have faith that we're going to protect our ships, but everyone at some point, even the best pilot, is going to take damage. And having a ship around that mean, like this that means you can keep going instead of having to make a pit stop for repairs has a direct impact on your bottom line. So is the ship worth $350? For the right people, absolutely. It's kind of like the Orion in that it provides you with some real opportunities to have a space career and really master your craft. Because those who spend the time getting better and becoming a great crew are going to be those same people that are absolutely invaluable to an operation success. Before I wrap this up, I just wanted to send a huge thank you, and I mean absolutely huge thank you. You know, I asked in a previous video that you all, uh, you know, kind of help support my wife and I because we decided to start the adoption process. Um, and I asked that you support through, uh, you know, sharing the link of the crowdfunding, and a ton of you did that. A lot of you actually ended up donating to the cause, and I can't tell you how excited it made my wife. You know, she really knows that I enjoy making videos and interacting with you all, but she had no idea the level of compassion that you all have and the level of companionship that we've kind of developed in our time here together. So I just wanted to say it again. I can't thank you all enough. We can't thank you enough because you've really made a huge difference in our lives and we're never going to forget it. So um, some of you guys are probably going, what the hell is he talking about? I'll post a link in the uh, description. You can check it out if you want. Um, it's basically kind of our story and what's going on. Um, but let's get back to the videos, but I had to get that out of the way because you just blew us away and I just needed to send a really sincere, heartfelt thank you. So there you have it. Um, that's our wrap up of the Anvil Crucible. Now, um, I know the ship is out of a lot of people's price ranges. $350 is a lot of dollars, um, but it's a really awesome ship and it's something an organization should work towards um, in, the, in the verse if they don't buy one beforehand. Uh, some organizations may end up doing like uh, pooling their funds to end up getting one for the organization. But if you have questions about the ship, let me know. Otherwise, stay tuned for the update on the repair document, which will hopefully be out soon. 
Um, put your comments in the uh, comment section on what your opinions of the ship are. And hopefully everyone will be getting into 2.0 pretty soon as the PTU starts tonight. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend and take care.